Today we're sitting in front of the P3 Orion, specifically the AEW model built by Customs and Border Protection, a Department of Homeland Security. Formerly we were part of the, we were part of the Department of Treasury and the Customs Service, but after 9-11, world changed and we changed with it and we were absorbed into the, the newly formed Department of Homeland Security. The airplane behind me here is a variant on the United States Navy's P-3 Orion. And what we did in the late 80s, we decided to merge the P-3 Orion's technology with that of the uh, E-2C Hawkeye. And as you can see behind me, we have the rotodome from the E-2C Hawkeye. When this airplane was purchased in the 90s, it was designed to be a part of the drug war, specifically air and marine interdiction of smuggling coming up from Central and South America. After some growing pains, we've gotten this technology to work, and we're the only law enforcement or military entity that's flying a P-3 that's so configured. This airplane predominantly does overwater maritime search, either for aircraft or for, for boats. And the key to maritime search is it involves mostly searching empty water. So what we like to do is we'll take this airplane out with another P-3 without the dome on it. That's called the slick version. And we work together in what's called a double eagle package. Those two airplanes on a good day and doing open water search can deconflict an area of water roughly the size of Texas. Not quite. If you take the Panhandle out, we can get all of that in one day. Now, if you move us closer to shore, where there are more boats, that surface, that air, the search area obviously shrinks because we have to go look at more contacts. But our job is going out there and to find and localize targets. And then that allows us to work with our Coast Guard and Navy brethren to actually get hands on the targets and uh, bring them to justice. And we've been very successful with that. In the last six years, just our office here in Jacksonville has gotten 100,000 pounds of raw cocaine six years running. That works out to about a billion dollars off the cartel's bottom line. We have another office in Texas that's done similarly well. So you're talking about in the neighborhood of two billion dollars and that's a raw value. That's not a street value number that's oft times inflated or specious. Uh, this is a, using, if you use twenty thousand dollars per kilo, every metric ton works out to twenty million dollars and we've worked, we've gotten in the neighborhood of fifty metric tons a year in both offices. So we're taking taking a pretty good bite out of them. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. After 9-11, obviously our role changed, or more accurately, it grew. On top of doing the maritime interdiction, which we still do regularly, we've absorbed a homeland security mission where we'll, do, we'll move these radar planes over areas that need additional coverage. Right after 9-11, we were the first civilian airplanes or government airplanes, non-military flying. They were initially over Atlanta, then they moved up and were flying in the middle of the country near Chicago. Uh, when the war broke out in 2003, we were flying out over New York City and Washington, D.C. We've been moved before for a large event such as the Super Bowl. We also do some presidential support. And we can also, with this airplane, uh, help in natural disasters. Once ca when Katrina happened, within two days, these airplanes were flying around the clock over there. There was obviously a TFR, and the FAA had, had suffered as much damage as the local community had, so they weren't in a position to support those efforts. We were up here giving VFR advisories to not only the military rescue, the search and rescue, but also all of the, uh, the civilian uh, helicopters coming in trying to bring food and all, trying to also get, let FEMA go in there and get an idea of really survey the level of the damage, determine where people needed to help most quickly. So this airplane can be on station very quickly. Also as a result of its unique status with its long legs, we can easily do 10, even 12 hours on station and we can be anywhere in the United States within about six hours. So we have the ability to be almost a fast reaction force. Or usually we'll crew up with 10 people. We'll go out with uh, two pilots plus a relief pilot, one engineer plus a relief flight engineer, and then between three to five uh, radar slash system operators in the back. That enables us to stay on station uh, for a minimum of 10 hours, and off times we'll go longer. Our days often get pretty long. If you're all of a sudden you're chasing dopers and you catch them out in the middle of the ocean, it may take a while to get the takedown assets in position. So we're off especially if we're in the double eagle package, 
Oftentimes, one of the airplanes will peel on off, go get gas for another 10 hours on station, and then we'll kind of leapfrog until we can get the good guys in position. Because obviously, it doesn't do us a whole lot of good to catch them or find them if we can't actually catch them. And apprehending them is really what our business is. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. All right, well, now we're up, actually up on board the P-3 Orion, and we're back into what we call the crew rest areas here. And we've set up one of our briefing boards, just kind of briefly uh, overlays all the different missions we do. Uh, as, as the world gets more complex, and certainly after 9-11, we realize that if you're going to be a military or a, a law enforcement asset in the country, you can't just specialize in one area. And as gratifying it is to just catch dope, and we all like doing that and we've gotten pretty good at it. There are other things we need to do to help in the homeland security type role. But kind of interestingly, and what I'd like to start with, you can see are kind of pictures of a couple of different kind of takedown assets. These are all actual boats that we've made cases on. People went to jail here. There was actual contraband. We are not alleging. Uh, kind of interesting here is what's called a go-fast boat. You can see uh, it's manufactured in Colombia. They'll have three of these high power motors on it, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but these little black packages are actually uh, cocaine. There's about 20 kilos in each of those packages, and if you use $20,000 a kilo, each one of those little black boxes is $400,000 worth of contraband. This is about three metric tons. This is about $60 million worth of raw cocaine we were able to take down. You can also see that they're loaded for bear with gas. They're planning on going a long way. That actually makes our life a little bit easier. The farther out they go, the more we, when we catch them, they don't really have any place else to run or hide to. Also kind of interestingly in this slide, oftentimes we will find them, especially the further out we go offshore, they'll use merchant fishing vessels. And this one, once the Navy destroyer showed up, he felt that it was, he needed to come up with a new exit strategy. So what they did was they lit their boat on fire, jumped in the water, and then when the Navy came alongside, they thanked them profusely for rescuing them from this in extremist situation they had found themselves. Well, unfortunately for them, the United States Navy and the Coast Guard are rather adept at putting out fires at sea. So what they did was they put the fire out anyway, got all of the evidence, and these fellows were both wet and charred by the time they were taken into custody. Also, we'll even see them on pleasure craft here. This uh, catamaran actually had both cocaine and heroin on it. So the high seas, unfortunately, are littered with folks who decide it's a good idea to try to sneak this in. And uh, it gives us, a, unfortunately, a fair amount of job security. 